it breaks the wounded spirit whole and comes the troubled breast. It is manna to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. Did name the rock on which I built my shield and hiding place. My never failing treasury filled with boundless joys of grace. Jesus, my shepherd, husband, friend, my prophet, priest, and king. My Lord, my life, my way, my end, accept the praise I bring. We kiss the effort of my heart and calls my warmest thought. But when I see thee as thou art, I'll praise thee as I ought. Welcome to Arrington Old Parish Church online worship service on this, our fourth Sunday of Easter. It's good to have you join with me as we worship God wherever you have gathered. And I do hope that you feel part of this worshipping community, for everyone is welcome. For this is a place of grace and not perfection. And today during our service we are focusing on Jesus Christ as our Good Shepherd. So whatever plans you have Find some space and quietness to be still in the presence of God, to breathe deeply and know that you are loved by God. So as we begin our worship, let us hear these words from Psalm 23. Oh 
This morning's reading is taken from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for his sheep. When the hired man, who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. So the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. As the father knows me and I know the father, in the same way, I know my sheep and they know me. I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this pen, but I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. One of the fascinating aspects of driving through rugged, the rugged lands of Scotland before lockdown was the Roman livestock that you came across. The majestic deer, the grazing goats, the bleating sheep with their lambs, the soaring birds of prey watching from above. And what one discovers is on those journeys is that the animals have no concept of what fences mean or what single track roads mean. They simply find ways of grazing the land and will overcome obstacles that are standing in their way. However, as a driver, one of the challenges, especially with sheep at the roadside, is that one has no idea of what direction it's going to take. It may sit at the side of the road and not move. It may become startled and just run in any direction. It may just saunter up the road in no hurry. But there is, that is until a familiar voice or sound is heard and then the sheep begin to head in that particular direction. For some of the sheep who isn't part of that flock, they too follow others and end up amongst the, the shepherd's flock. But thank goodness for the colourful paint marks on the sheep's wool to make that distinction. And it's fascinating watching the shepherds gathering in his flock, watching with his eagle eye, watching and waiting, and searching if one has gone astray. The good shepherd's job is to care for all of his flock, and they're not asked to do anything but listen and return when called. In our lives and for today, we are reminded that God, through his son, Jesus Christ, is our good shepherd. There is nothing for us to do in this passage except rely on God, and that is all. But that is indeed a challenge, for many of us are always on the go. So having to do nothing, having to trust in others, is challenging. And when you think about it within worshipping communities, we are asked to, to come and worship collectively. We are meant to come and listen to sermons, worship together together. And by the time you leave, you have an action plan of what you're going to do during this coming week with God at the helm and how you continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And part of our faith believe that this one hour on a Sunday is our time to breathe, to gather our thoughts before leaving the church grounds, to continue God's work. It's our time to actually sit still and listen to what God is calling us to do. And when God calls, we listen. And sometimes we respond. And in this passage, we are reminded that Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. He is our deep comfort, our pastures green. He is our hope, our life-giving water. He is our rest. He is our comfort. He is with us as we walk through our valleys of life. And he will lead us to places that we dare not go. But he will also defend us and stand beside us. He laid down his life for his sheep, 
his people. No one took it from him. He gave it in perfect sacrifice as a timeless example of unconditional love. And yet, under assault, he is our protection. In our sins, he is our redemption. And the shepherd knows his sheep. But we should know him. However, describing Jesus himself as a good shepherd and that his people following him as sheep was probably difficult for those early Christians to hear. And even today, hearing being called the sheep can be jarring with us as well. And those early Christians probably mistook his wise teaching for egotism. And you can understand that when we look at the context in which John is writing his gospel. His gospel was written in the latter half of the first century and after the destruction of the temple by Roman military forces. It is set amidst an intense conflict with Judaism, which resulted in the expulsion of Jewish Christians from the synagogue. The original sheep, who are the people of Israel, were expelled from their temple. And so Jesus is calling them to listen to his voice, to trust him and return to him. And one can understand that John the Gospel writer found a way to offer comfort to those outcast Jewish people who followed Christ by reminding them that Jesus was outside the sheepfold as well. He was outside the temple. And that all they had to do was to continue to follow his voice to find good pasture to restore their souls. Today, we as the followers of Christ, we have the advantage of knowing the rest of the story. We can see the gentle wisdom in Jesus' teaching. We know that he did just what he said, and he chose to lay down and take up his life for each one of us. As one writer says, the entire New Testament speaks of a saving act that stands out for others. No other name speaks of the innocent life laid down for others, generating spontaneous life, love for the outsider and the needy. No one in the Roman world at that time had ever looked after the sick and friendless with the self-sacrificial love that Christians speak of. Yet that story doesn't end there with Jesus. For example, as the, reader goes on, the writer goes on to say, if we read the book of Acts, Christ's ministry continues in the lives of those who believed in him, hence the spread of Christianity. Friends, what we see in John's Gospel and in the book of Acts and other testaments of the New Testament, what we begin to witness is the development of a new ministry with the heart of Christ's teaching at the forefront and the core of Christ's teaching is simply Bible study, fellowship, communal meals, prayer, financial accountability, evangelism, positive relations with the wider community. All of these things were happening by the power of the name of Jesus and it's continuing even today when all of God's people becomes involved. Ultimately, this passage reminds us about the power of Jesus Christ. It reminds each one of us of how important it is to continue to work hard on our own relationship with him, to strengthen that relationship through prayer and reading scripture. It's about having trust and confidence to become part of a worshipping community that follows Christ's teachings. It's about being authentic in our own faith, recognising that we don't always get things right, that we try and be a place of grace and are not perfection. Although that is challenging for some of us, put up a high standard which is placed upon the community. And we often fail and then we are criticised for that failure. But it's so easy nowadays to just walk away, to find other ways to occupy our time. And we have plenty of excuses. How often have we said when a 
cry has come out to, for people to volunteer, we say, we're too busy. It's not my thing. I don't like how we worship these days. We pick holes in the service. We complain that the church has forgotten about us. So we turn and we walk away. Forgetting why we gather in the first place. Why we work with our communities, our young people. Why we are continually encouraged to dwell in the scriptures. Continually asked to pray for this worshipping community. Continually asked to offer of your time and your talents, not just your financial contributions. It is because this is who we are as a Christian worshipping community. We follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. We go where we are called to be. We are called to serve not only the people we like, but also those we struggle with. Those we would not normally associate ourselves with. So yes, label us sheep. Label us whatever way you like. But we all know who our leader is. The Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. So yes, I want to be part of a community that is true to the teachings of Jesus Christ. Which means seven days a week, not just one hour on a Sunday. I want to be part of a community who are prepared to follow the, in the footsteps of our Good Shepherd. And remember this, our Good Shepherd has been scarred for his people and still he knows us by name. Surely, my brothers and sisters in Christ, surely that is enough to follow him, to follow our Good Shepherd out into our community, out into our people, those whom we love and those whom we struggle to love. So yes, let us stand in agreement. Let us follow the Good Shepherd. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, help us to see your presence in our own lives. Your abundant gifts poured out in all of your creation. Given that we might live well, in peace and in love, sharing the joy of each other as well as the burdens. Today, as disease continues to spread throughout our world and healthcare workers become even more stretched, we pray that you help us to never advert our eyes when any of your children are suffering. Instead, let us hear your call to create lasting change. Today, as the economic and political situation at home and in other countries continue to sow division, greed and distress, we think particularly of our leaders struggling to guide us through these difficult days as well as those who continue to put themselves forward for public service. We pray that you help us all to know that we are never self-sufficient. Instead, let us always be aware of how much we need each other. Today, as your church continues to work for its place in a changing society, where anger impacts the lives of so many, where love is so often eclipsed by hate. We pray that you help us to find our voices to speak up and to speak out in your name and for the sake of your message. Today, as we continue to seek your wisdom and guidance, as we strive to live in a way that is pleasing to you, we pray that you help us to recognise our safety in your fold, that we will see what you have given to us, and that we will work always to shine your light and spread your love to everyone 
today and every day. So loving God, hear our prayers. Amen. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our time is just about over. And can I thank you once again for joining with me as we worship God wherever you have gathered. Can I also remind you to, to keep an eye out for upcoming announcements, especially on the 2nd of May, as we begin to, to make the progress of reopening a church. And we'll let you know what is that definitely happening on that day. So tune in on the 2nd of May to find out some, hopefully some fingers crossed, good news that we'll be able to start reopening, as I said. But I recognise it's been a long, weary time of being out with the church building. But again, thank you for your, your faithfulness to your Lord Jesus Christ and also to this worshipping community. Your thoughts and your prayers um, have been very much appreciated. So remember to stay in touch and, and keep in touch with your friends and your neighbours, but also keep in touch through email, keep an eye on your social media pages as well, and, and look out for further information which we will deliver on the 2nd of May to you all. So on that note, my brothers and sisters in Christ, remember stay safe, stay well, stay connected with God and with each other, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon you, those whom you love and those whom you struggle to love, now and forevermore. Amen.